Last Sunday in June. So next month is April, right? <laughs> That's what I said last hour, so. <laughs> but I was corrected <laughs> graciously, so. Yeah. No, we'll go forward. We'll continue to move through our year. <clears throat> Let's turn to number 141. Look, ye saints, look, the sight is glorious. Yeah, you can't quite uh, sing it with that same emphasis, but that's what it's saying. Okay, let's sing that one now. <clears throat> Number 141. Personally, today, don't put it off. <clears throat> Number 146. 146. Sooner or later, sooner or later, it's going to happen. Amen. 146.
Christ, be with him forever, forever, and still forever. That's eternal life, by the way. You know, it's sad that there are so many religious groups that don't think you can have eternal life and know it in this life. And they're just hoping that they die in the graces of God, and so they'll have eternal life. Uh, listen, you can have eternal life now and know it. That's what the Bible says. These things are I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know you have eternal life. You may know that. And so if you don't know that, then you need to know it. Uh, see, if you think you can lose, get, get saved and then lose your salvation, that wasn't eternal life, was it? So you never had eternal life. You had some type of temporal thing that you were thinking about. Uh, but if you want the true eternal life in Jesus Christ, it's eternal from when you receive it. And we need to remember that, uh, that eternal life is eternal. Uh, God keeps you. Once you are saved by his grace and you are adopted into the family of God, nobody can snatch you out of that. Nobody can take you away from Christ if you're in Christ's body. How wonderful it is. You know you've got eternal life. Amen. We do have a, uh, one letter that would interest some of you, <clears throat> but still no answers to when we'll see them. From the Sawapas. Happy summertime. We hope this finds you all having a wonderful week. The uh, Sawapas are missionaries to uh, Togo, West Africa. Okay, they have, uh, she went over as a medical missionary and has a uh, medical facility built now. They still have no water or electricity, but it's, it's built. <laughs> and so they, they are uh, back in the States now after she married a, a national pastor over there. And they have a little Jesse, and uh, I'm Josie, excuse me, thank you. Uh, and, uh, and they uh, will be visiting us sometime this year later, it sounds like. But anyway, <clears throat> They are enjoying all the beautiful aspects of the season. Flowers, flowering trees, fresh green new growth, strawberries, blueberries, mild fresh temp temperatures with lots of scattered rain showers. In Togo, it's the end of dry season. Mangoes are abundant and it's usually the hottest time of the year. The Lord is taking such good care of us as we travel. We are so blessed to have the supporters we do. It's been a real joy to be with our brothers and sisters in Christ as we tour and share all the cool things the Lord has been doing in Togo. We have had meetings in North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Missouri, Arkansas, and Colorado. Our upcoming meetings during the next couple of months will be Florida, Michigan, North Carolina, Tennessee, and New York. <laughs> Holding on there for some of you. The Lord has provided us a nice place to stay while we are out stateside it's a grandmother suite annexed in the house of a christian couple we've known for many years and just a mile or so away from lisa's parents josie gets to see her grandparents often as enjoying play times and making memories with them we praise the lord for lisa's brother's last scan and blood work showing no signs of cancer okay her brother is a missionary in um yes say it uh, Talon? Yes, I can, still can't hear, but. Talon. It's Tal oh, Talon, uh, uh, 
what's the name of this country? Anyway, place Estonia. in the... Estonia. Estonia, yes, thank you. And uh, he's been missionary faithful over there for years. He had cancer, and now last scan and blood work shows no signs of cancer. What an answer to many prayers. Thank you so much for your specific prayers for him. As many of you know, our church and clinic area in Togo do not have electric or water. In this village setting, it is difficult to keep connected with our church family while we are in the States. By God's grace, though, we have been able to keep con contact one of our church sisters via WhatsApp. She has been giving us reports on how things are going over there. She said the children have been coming to church to sing and, and play and pray, excuse me. <laughs> Pray with us that the local young people would become interested in the ministry. The Lord would send us other nationals to partner and help us in our church. Pray that our church children would stay faithful to the Lord and be a testimony to their friends and parents who are unsaved. The majority of their parents are involved in the traditional sacrifices and customs. Pray with us that their parents don't obligate them to follow in these practices during our absence and that they will stay close to the Lord. We have such big hearts for our church family. We know the Lord is going to continue to take good care of them. We count it such a privilege that we get to serve the Lord in Togo and are so excited about all that he is doing there. Thank you for partnering with us in this ministry because of his great love, the Sawapa family. So they're busy running around the country and visiting churches and things and family. Family. They haven't had a, well, they had visa after she got married, and then they had the Josie, but they uh, haven't had visas to all come. And so now they finally are, all that's lined out, and so it's been quite a few years since she's been back for anything. <clears throat> okay, anybody know anything else about anyone in particular? But, okay, let's uh, turn to number... <clears throat> 147, 147. <clears throat> There'll be no dark valley when Jesus comes. No more sorrow, no more weeping. <clears throat> Just the songs of greeting when Jesus comes and takes, his, takes us home. Amen. Number 147. <clears throat> There'll be no dark
course, our normal weeping. What a wonderful time God has planned for his people. Amen. Going to be a lot of weeping in this world for a while, isn't there? But it's going to pass away. The Lord will be reigning on the throne as he's designed to do. And that will no longer be under the prince and power of the air. He will be put down uh, completely. And the Lord Jesus Christ will take the reign that is rightfully his. Uh, isn't that something the way we see these things and you see the Old Testament we study through and we see uh, David and his problems and how he takes the throne that's rightfully his. He was anointed to take it after uh, King Saul when the Lord rejected Saul as being king. And then Absalom takes it as part of the, the punishment really for David's sin. And then uh, all of a sudden he's going back to Jerusalem here. And so he'll be reigning there. And we know that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to reign on the throne of David. He's the lineage of David uh, through human uh, beings. And uh, he'll be there. Let's take our Bibles now and look at a few things here. Uh, I'm going to look at uh, some biblical divisions that we have. Just what the Bible says and what he calls people. Uh, uh, for the human race. Now the human race is one race. It's all, uh, there are no split races. All that comes about because of lies and evolution, okay? Not from the word of God. So let's go to Acts to start with and look at Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. And we see that the Bible says that mankind um, was made by God and that uh, it is one race, it is one blood, one blood, all a man. Why, we're made in God's image. We're not an animal, another falsehood that's been purported by the world today that have tried to dethrone God, try to put down God, try to put down his word. And so it just isn't so that, uh, <clears throat> that there's all these different races going on here in the uh, world. So chapter 17, verse 24, here's where Paul goes into Athens and he's, uh, he comes by the statue there, the, the inscription to the unknown God. And he starts preaching on it. And he's telling them, well, here's, here's this, you're talking about this unknown God. Well, let me tell you about him because I know him. Okay, he's unknown to you, but I know him. So now I'm going to tell you about him. In verse 24, he says, A God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood, all nations of men uh, for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord if haply they might feel after him and find him though he be not far from every one of us for in him we live and move and have our being as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Uh, that's one of their poets there in Athens that said that. But uh, we see here that uh, Paul is uh, reaching out to the people in Athens and he makes known that he's made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth. That includes all nations of men, doesn't it? That includes the whole, the whole works, and they're one blood. Uh, <clears throat> nobody has different blood than the blood that God put into human veins uh, that he started Adam and Eve with. Now I wanna go through the Bible starting, we're gonna just go through it pretty much in, in uh, order of the chronological or order of the Bible. So let's go back to Genesis one, and we'll start there. I wanna look at a number of things today. And we'll see how far we get. Now remember, the divisions of the Bible uh, that men have, we're going to see those listed in these different places that we look. 
Uh, we're going to note one thing right now. You know, I was thinking that the song came to me, uh, uh, Jesus Loves the Little Children of the World. Uh, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Well, you know, scientifically, that's not true. It's not, I, I mean, that's just what people perceive people as looking at. He does love all the children. That's not the point. The point is that the colors, uh, we're all of the same uh, uh, tone. We're all brown, okay? We just have different shades of it. And of course, you have different things, like you have the blushes, you have the, uh, sometimes the blood comes through and, and shows redder and that kind of thing. But uh, our, our skin tone, scientifically, is brown. Everything about man, no matter who you are, if you live in Africa or Australia or Europe or Asia or the United States, uh, Canada, Mexico, South America, uh, you're brown. Different shades of brown. I mean, uh, well, am I white? No. Hold up your paper to any of you. Are any of you white in here? Is there a white person in here? No, some of our hair can get a little hoary headed and, and white, but uh, that's real white. I mean, our skin isn't white. And we have that fallacy today, and it's caused a lot of problems in the world. And so look at Genesis chapter 1. We'll try to run through a bunch of this, and I hope you can get the points what I'm looking at here. <clears throat> so in uh, Genesis uh, chapter 1, let's see, verse uh, 27. <clears throat> so God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Uh, how many races did he make? One, right? There's just one, man and woman. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And so God made them in his own image, male and female, uh, man, people, okay? And they're all the same blood. Now, who in this auditorium today or in this world today don't have Adam and Eve as their ancestor. It depends on if you want to believe a lie or if you want to believe God's word, right? Uh, God's word's very plain on it. Look at chapter 2 there. Chapter 2 and verse 7 says, uh, And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So chapter 2 kind of goes into more specifics about what he did in chapter 1, making man and woman. Uh, <clears throat> look at verse 20 of chapter 2, down there in verse 20. And Adam gave names uh, to the ca all cattle, all the fowl of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept and took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Uh, that's the, this is a description now of how he got man and wife, okay? Male and female, the two genders that he created. What we read there in uh, chapter 1. Uh, so, he made a woman and brought her unto the man. Verse 22, and Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Uh, notice, she's flesh of his flesh. She, they are one. Uh, how many races? One. one, okay. One race, two people, okay. And they're one race. Because she was taken out of man. So there's no difference between the man and the woman, right? Uh, so if you're a descendant, uh, you're still one race, right? Somebody else didn't slip something in, in there on you. Uh, <clears throat> Therefore, verse 24, shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Still only one race. And they were both naked, the man and the wife, and were not ashamed. Uh, that's what true marriage is all about. 
And uh, listen, folks, when you're married, uh, you can have, uh, not be ashamed of it at all in the married bed, okay? It's undefiled, the Bible says. Let's go on now and look at chapter 6 of Genesis. And came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. Um, so people are multiplying now, and we're getting a, a larger population. Daughters were born, and we won't go into the, uh, the, the part here with uh, the sons of God uh, coming down. Let's go on to uh, verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Uh, so already in chapter 6, we see that uh, we've had some uh, strange things happening here. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So man's mind and his heart was turned from God. It repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And God was grieved because what he saw, man turning to his own self and turning from God. Now he's still, man is still one race. Uh, that hasn't changed his relationship made by God in his image and one race. And so uh, here, verse 6, it repented the Lord that he made him on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Not everybody was totally wicked, were they? Uh, Noah and his family were still uh, living believing in God. Noah, a preacher of righteousness, the Bible calls him. Uh, let's move on now. But we see how, how quick wickedness comes. Uh, listen, we've seen in America how quick in the wickedness comes. Uh, all of a sudden the Bible stand is dropped, it's taken out of the public places and schools and a whole new indoctrination system is set up and just in a matter of years, why everything has changed. Look at uh, chapter uh, 6. Oh, okay, let's go on to verse 11, right? 11 there. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Wow, corrupt and full of violence. You ought to see the, uh, the increase in violence, the statistics, which, of course, they're going to pad the statistics anyway, but the ones that you can get, uh, the increase in violence in our world today just in one year is unbelievable. Uh, and the earth uh, was corrupt before God. Uh, verse 12, God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. A man has corrupted his way. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence uh, through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. And so Noah, God tells him now, this is what you need to do, because I'm going to save you, and you're going to start the world over again for population. Uh, but you're still going to be one race. Okay? I'm emphasizing that, all of one blood. Uh, let's go on into... Chapter 10 now of Genesis. Chapter 10 and verse uh, 5. Uh, by these, this was uh, Noah and Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Uh, by these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after his family, in their nations. Uh, so right there, I want you to note that it calls them, how are they? After their race? No. Nothing about being different races. All of one blood. Everyone after his tongue, okay, how he spoke, his family, his nation, the nation. So you have a nationality, you have uh, your family groups. Okay, we're going to see this as we continue on looking through these, all these different things. Uh, but remember that the imagination and the thoughts of his heart, God was only... Uh, wickedness and corruption. But Noah, Noah, still one blood. Uh, chapter, uh, verse 20 now of chapter 10. 
These are the sons of Ham after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. So what, how is man described in the Bible again? What are the divisions here? We have Ham, their families, their tongues, their countries, their nations. Okay, we got it? Now, does that mean that we, we had, uh, now we have different races in Africa and different races in uh, China and different races in America? No. Different races in Europe? No. Not at all. All of one race. Uh, <clears throat> 31, verse 31. These are the sons of Shem after their families, after their tongues, in their lands, after their nations. You see how the breakdown is in the Bible? These are biblical divisions of families, of people, people groups. And these are the families, verse 32, of the sons of Noah after their generations. Okay, family generations, their nations, in their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. <clears throat> so the nations were divided in the earth, and you had families, you had countries, you had nations. Uh, you had uh, the generations of families, you have tongues, you have all these things. Now the tongues early on were probably more dialects than anything because when we see the Tower of Babel coming up here, we see that they were all of one tongue, one language, <clears throat> okay? But each one has their own distinct. If you've been out in the, out in the uh, nations of the world, <laughs> Uh, especially third world countries and things where uh, you can go know the national language and yet you go from village to village and everyone speaks it differently. It's kind of like we have American English. If you want English English, you go to Great Britain or to England, right? Uh, same way with Spain. Spain, uh, the Spanish in South America, Central America. Uh, Mexican Spanish is not the same as Spanish in, from Spain. Uh, when our kids uh, learned that in college, they, uh, our one grandson spent time in Spain uh, to learn that language as well as the ones they knew here. So that's the languages. Now let's go on to chapter uh, 11. Chapter 11 <coughs> of Genesis. <coughs> <coughs> 